Hey everybody, it's Brad again. Um, in a previous video, uh, I believe it was titled Auto Digitizing the Ravens Logo, I showed you how to find the Ravens logo uh, and auto digitize it, and uh, I went through the process of actually downloading the image off of Google Image Search. But I want to do a more generic um, video on using Google Image Search to find any image that you might want to auto digitize. Um, I say auto digitize because I'm going to gear it specifically to finding an image that you can use any kind of software's auto digitizing wizard uh, to turn it into embroidery. Um, if you're going to be manually digitizing, the quality of the artwork is far, far less important than if you're auto digitizing it. So uh, even though I say auto digitizing, you can really use the same technique for finding images that you want to hand digitize too if you're into that. Um, but just from talking to people over the past few weeks about this, it seems like most of you um, don't have a, a real firm idea of how powerful Google's image search really is and, and the types of things you can do with it. Um, so the types of images that we're going to be looking for are not too complicated of a design. Um, you can get kind of complicated, but uh, the more detail that the auto digitizing software has to deal with, the harder it is for it to to come out with something that's going to look good in the end. Um, so at least for uh, right now we're going to look for uncomplicated designs with not too many colors, very clearly defined areas of color. Basically what uh, what you would call clip art. Um, uh, and also what we're going to look for is uh, an image that's very large, high resolution. That means that the pixels are very small. Uh, so if you zoom in on it, basically it takes a while before it becomes pixelated. Um, all right, so I'm just going to jump right in here. Uh, if you're not there already, navigate to Google's website, www.google.com. Uh, and you are going to look at this top bar up here, this black bar at the top with all these different choices. And what we're going to do is left click on images. So we're going to left click on images. Okay, and now we're on Google Image Search. So anything we type in here, it's going to do a search through the internet and find pictures that it thinks relate to whatever you type in here. Um, lately I've been doing, um, in classes uh, where I've been showing this, um, I've been doing the, the Orioles logo since the Orioles are actually good this year. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to type in Orioles. And if you notice, there's an autocomplete here um, where it, you know, thinks of all these different things I might be looking for. And I don't even have to type in logo. Um, I can just left click on here where it says Orioles logo because that's one of the things that the autocomplete is, is, is doing for me. So I'm going to left click on that. And what's going to happen is this whole list here, uh, and I can use this scroll bar here to scroll down this whole list of things that Google thinks relate to Orioles logo and well they pretty much do but how do I know which ones of these are good for digitizing they all look about the same size um, in the picture here uh, so what you want to do is hover your mouse over uh, a picture and look at the number that comes up now there's gonna be a web address after the number I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see this one's 1365 by 1024 and then it says sports logos screensavers.com it doesn't matter what the website says uh, after it what you're looking at is the number you want to see um, at least one of those numbers be over a thousand um, if you see that then chances are it's high enough resolution uh, that you can auto digitize it what you don't want are images like this one where there's actually shading. Okay, we've got shading in here, shading in the logo. That's tough for the auto digitizer to deal with. And if you look, 275 by 235, that's just too small, really. Even if this was really good quality artwork, I'd hesitate to use it unless I had nothing better uh, to go from. Um, so we're going to just look around at some of the sizes here 320 by 211, that's a little small. Plus, we've got a trademark simple in there, and nobody wants to digitize that. So looking around, looking around, let's look at this. Oh, this one, the, the very first one, 1365 by 1024. That's, that's really perfect. Um, anything over a thousand, like I said, so, you know, you can look through and if you're not seeing very many that you like that are big, you can actually narrow your search results using these tools up here. Uh, if you look at, at this button here, it says search tools. If you left click on that and go to size, and tell it that you want large, it will actually filter out the results so that all of these results are large. Okay, 
and uh, I see so this is 1920 by 1200. That's enormous. All of these are nice and big. Any of these things would auto digitize nice, except maybe this one um, because of the shading on the ball. And you can see there's a little bit of noise. This is called noise when there's particles, you know, that, that show up outside the image frame. What you want is really clean artwork that doesn't have anything like that. So even though this is a big image and it probably would digitize okay, um, it's not ideal. Um, so still, this first one is really the ideal one. So I'm going to go ahead and left click on it. And what it does is it brings me up a preview of the image. And it also shows me some images that it thinks are similar. But what we're interested in is taking this image and downloading it to our computer. So the way you do it, left click on view original image. Ah, there it is. And now I'm going to right click on the image anywhere on it. It doesn't matter where. And I'm going to choose save picture as and it wants to default to save this to my pictures library which is fine um, I save it Baltimore Orioles 3 that's a fine name for it I just click save and there it is it's done now all you have to do is follow along pretty much with my auto digitizing the Ravens logo um, and uh, well you know what I got time I'll go ahead and just digitize auto digitize this for you real quick uh, so, to get to it, I'm going to go down to my Masterworks icon and open it. Now we wait for the program to open. We wait for the program to open. That's <laughs> where I always make a joke about my computer running on diesel power. But um, it's not funny because this computer that I'm running now is really, really powerful. And it still takes a while to open. Okay, so, uh, I've got Masterworks open. Um, now. If you don't have Masterworks, obviously this part isn't going to help you, but you just go into your uh, own auto-digitizing program and um, go through the whatever the wizard tells you to do. Uh, you just have to select that image we downloaded. So go to Tools. The auto-digitizing wizard is under Tools. Go to Auto-Digitizing and left-click that. I'm going to select an image, and let's see, it was in my Pictures library. There it is and I choose the image that I downloaded. Now you have to know where you downloaded it, so my default directory was in pictures, yours might be in your downloads folder, so go and figure out wherever you saved it and then uh, select that image and click open. Once you have that, click next. And here I'm going to set the size, um, the width of this 481 by 0.7 millimeters is awful big. First I'm going to narrow down the size a little bit and from there I'll size it down so that it would fit in um, let's say 200 millimeter hoop that's an 8 by 8 hoop so we're gonna make this really nice and big uh, but 200 millimeters is about 8 inches that's gonna be from here to here is what it's measuring so my my actual image is only gonna be oh, let's see from tip to tip maybe five or six inches just uh, eyeballing it. Anyway, you uh, select what size you want it to be um, and hit next. Okay, from here I actually see an issue and this is an issue with with Masterworks um, and many other digitizing programs like uh, Floriani does the same thing um, where part of my image, the beak, is the same color as my background and I just know that that's going to be an issue um, because what it's going to do is it's going to want to remove all the orange because it sees the orange being the background. Um, and uh, so we're going to edit this image slightly. Okay, we're going to get a little more complicated than I was going to get, but it's still really not very complicated. Um, we have a button right here that says edit image, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to edit this image so this background color is not a color that appears anywhere in the, the logo that we want to digitize. All right, so we left click edit image. It will automatically open up your paint program that's included with your computer. Everybody has this. This is what will happen when you click that button. Um, and you're gonna, okay, look up here. You see one of these buttons is a paint bucket. You're gonna left click on the paint bucket, choose a color like gray, and then left click anywhere in the, in the outer orange out here. Cool, I just left click once. I've got a gray background. It can remove that background and it'll be fine. So the way you get back to your digitizing program, you just go here, choose exit, 
and say and hit save when it asks if you want to save. It'll automatically import that image back into the wizard with the size the way that you asked for and everything. Um, and now you just hit next. Hit next again. Set your trim to always if you have a machine that cuts jump stitches like say an Alissimo, Elegante, uh, 6 needle, 10 needle, uh, or any other machine that cuts jump stitches. Make sure you set that on always and then go ahead and click on finish. And then you wait. But here's my logo. I'll go ahead and go back to home and put it on 3D so we can see it a little better. Look at that. That would sew out. That would actually sew out nice. How about that? Nice, quick, easy. I mean, it took me a lot longer to do it because I'm explaining it. If, if I was just doing this, it would have been done a long time ago. Um, so you can really, once you get good at it, crank these out. Um, and any image that's the specification types that I told you about before, um, this will this will pretty much work that way. The only thing I would change about this is the order that it, this is sewing out. Actually, looking at this, I think the black should sew out on top of the orange. And the way you do that is fairly simple. Uh, you just go ahead and left click on the black and drag it. I'm holding it. I'm, I'm clicking and holding and dragging it on top of the orange. There we go. See how the detail kind of pops a little more with the black on top? The, the software can't look at it and be like, well, this would look better this way or the other way. So uh, I went ahead and helped it out there, and I think that looks better. But now we just go to the magic ball here, save as, and you're just going to save it as whatever you want. Um, and make sure you save it in your preferred format as well as a BLF file, and go sew it out. That's the end of this tutorial. And I'm going to try to make some more videos soon. I know I've been slacking, um, but um, it's been really busy with all these conventions and stuff we've been going to. So I'll try to get more uploaded and uh, have some new exciting stuff for you guys to watch. Um, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next